This video will give insights on how to import signals from TEST or CA files in Altair Compose and the first steps to extract meanings out of them. So let's start talking about file input and output. Altair Compose has a wide range of supported input and output file formats. This ability covers not only the most popular TEST data formats but also CA files. Different test data formats may be easily imported, such as UNV, ISO, ASCII, CSV, text, and others. Also, binary file formats like DAC are accessible. With regard to CA simulations, outputs from different solvers of finite element method, computational fluid dynamics, and multibody systems are also supported. Let's start with the first steps to perform signal processing. So the first one is import data coming from test or CE. Then we process the data in time domain or frequency domain. And these are some of the functions available in Compose depending on which domain the user is working with. In a nutshell, time domain analysis refers to variation of amplitude of signal over time while frequency domain refers to the amplitude versus the frequency of each sine wave that the signal is composed of. And the third step is to export or visualize the output of the analysis. Uh, with respect to CA files, the outputs are binary and therefore they are not easily accessible with other programming languages. On the other hand, with OML in Compose, the user directly reads various types of CA files from different vendors and their entities are seamlessly recognized. Subcases, data types, requests, components and time steps. The most flexible command to access such files is readCAE because it supports multiple syntaxes where all indices can be accessed, a range of indices, or a list of indices. And there are also support commands to read specific parts of CA files to extract information related to subcases, data types, requests, components, among others. Let's go to the first example to see how to read modal frequency response analysis results and plot the RMS. As a good practice, it's good to clear the workspace up front and then uh, write the variables that will be the inputs for the CA readers. In case the contents of the CA file are not known at this point, the support functions that I just mentioned help to fill this gap. As an example, let's say that the subcase name is not known. We can use get subcase list function and then give the file name as the first argument to store the subcase list. In this example, we are interested in the frequency response subcase. And that's why the second element of the output should be stored in a variable and called in the CA readers later on. ReadCA function directly interprets a mode of frequency response analysis file from, from many solvers. The result of this example specifically comes from Alter Opdestruct and the calculation and plotting of its RMS is the starting point for fatigue damage calculation. After squeezing a spurious dimension in the output matrix that comes due to the way that the results are stored in the file, RMS function automatically calculates root mean square values of displacements in Z direction, because this was our input, and plot function allows the visualization of uh, its outcome. Root mean square values relate to the power of the wave in time domain. Data acquisition in real conditions may face obstacles that create disturbances like trends or spurious spikes. So this noise should be removed to reflect the true behavior of the system. 
So now let's talk a bit about removing trends from a signal. Uh, so the trend in a signal is the same as removing a trend from a time series. And when one detrends data, a certain pattern which is not inherent in that data is removed. The function detrend serves for that purpose because it removes the mean or best fit line from a signal. And the inputs of this function are the signal and the method to remove the trend, which could be constant to remove the mean or linear to remove the best fit trend, which is based on the least squares uh, method. Let's see this example how to remove trend from a data set which is stored in a binary file. The first thing is to open the binary file in read-only mode and read its data, specifying the dimension and the precision type. The second step is to separate the signal into two different vectors, one with time steps and the other with the amplitude. And the colon operator that we see here means that all elements in that specific dimension should be manipulated. Since Compose is vectorized, most functions may be applied in the vector as a whole and not element by element. And this uh, capability leads to a drastic reduction in computational time. And then uh, dtrend function should be used because it's a straightforward way to achieve the main goal of the exercise. Its first argument is the signal amplitude, whereas the second one is the method to detrend it. So let's use the linear method first. When we run the script, we can see that a linear trend is subtracted from the original data set. This trend line is a curve fitting using a linear polynomial and the trend subtracts every point from the original curve using this linear approximation. Now let's change the argument of the trend function from linear to constant. So the constant method will compute the mean of the signal and then subtract it. The principle is the same, but now the trend line is a constant whose value is the mean and dtrend subtracts every point from the original curve. Now let's talk about removing spikes from a signal. Spikes are extreme changes in measured data that probably don't represent the actual behavior of the system. And a good practice is always to check whether these identified spikes happen in other channels too or if there is an oscillatory behavior after the peak that might help to qualify it as a true peak. The measure median absolute deviation is widely used in statistics to assess the variability of a certain data set. And using math functions like 1D interpolation and median, it's possible to construct a robust median absolute deviation method to detect spikes using Hempel identifier. For each sample, the function computes the median of a window composed of the sample and its six surrounding samples. The following example is how to remove spikes using median absolute deviation from a strain signal stored in an MAT file. The first thing is to get the variables stored in the MAT file using load and then create a new variable to store the strain data. Then we can compute the median absolute deviation which uses Hempel identifier. The first step to use it is to divide this input signal in windows according to the Hempel identifier that was explained before. Seven samples will be considered and the median of this window will be calculated. And after the computation of the median of the window, subtract the median from each value of the window. Now we can plot the original strain and the corrected one without these spurious spikes. The first plotting block sets the first curve with the original strain and the X and Y labels of the plot. The second block 
holds the state of the axis, so the corrected string curve will be in overlay with the original one. And as we can see, many spikes were identified as peaks that are not part of the original signal, and they probably come from imprecisions of the measurement. Now let's talk about resampling signals. Typically, the sampling rate is defined as 1 over the amount of time between successive samples. And resampling methods allow the user to change the sampling rate of the signal. Sample rate conversion would prevent changes in speed when converting tapes to CD audios, for instance. And an offset can be specified during the resampling, which is the sample at which the output data starts. Upsample function increases the sampling rate of the signal and downsample function decreases the sampling rate of the signal. Whereas resample would simply be a combination of downsample and upsample applied to the same signal in order to resample the data to a new fixed rate. Let's see this example about how to remove samples of a displacement signal from fatigue analysis, which is stored in a white space delimited file. In most practical cases, fatigue data is sampled at roughly 10 times the highest expected frequency to minimize aliasing. And most durability problems are usually related to low frequency, which leads to larger displacements and therefore the displacement signal may be downsampled. The first step is to read the data with DLM read, which is appropriate for the limited files. The first argument of the function is the file name and the second is the delimited. Then store time and displacement in two different variables. And as I mentioned before, the scalon operator will store all elements in that specific dimension. In this case, downsample function was applied to the time vector in order to create the correspondent curve with less samples. The second argument tells us that every tenth sample is retained. We can now plot the downsampled signal over the original one, adding a legend to identify each curve. If we open the two displacement variables by double-clicking on them in the variable browser, we can check that every tenth sample from the original signal is stored in the new one. The last topic to be covered in this video is about feature extraction and statistics. Feature extraction is the term that refers to the extraction of characteristics about the input signal. And statistics plays an important part in this process, obviously. And finding peaks of data is uh, one of the most common feature extraction techniques to determine local peaks according to criteria like minimum peak height, minimum distance between peaks, and minimum peak width. So let's see this example, how to extract local peaks of an electrocardiogram signal coming from a Python library. So this data set was taken from a Python package for bio signal processing, and it contains a generic ECG signal. And the variable with the signal may be retrieved from Python workspace to OML with get Python var function. OML has a bidirectional bridge with Python that allows integration of both languages in the same script. This is accomplished in this case with evolve Python script function that evaluates Python statements within Compose. Now let's plot the data and add grid and label to the plot area. And then find peaks function extracts local peaks of the signal which are greater than 2.1 millivolts with min peak height parameter. Uh, the outputs of this function are respectively the peak values, the indices where these peaks were found, and extra information related to peak width based on fitted parabolas. The minimum peak height value allows the identification of these short waves that indicate the electrical impulse in the upper chambers of the heart 
and the taller waves represent the lower chambers contracting to pump up blood uh, to the body. And this exercise helps to identify cardiovascular anomalies based on the length, the width, and the time when these waves happen. Uh, in the end, we can use scatter function to explicitly mark these local peaks identified by the function. OTA Compose also provides a vast library for statistics to cover the calculation of many parameters that help to describe the signal. Some of these functions are max and min to get maximum and minimum elements, mean to compute average or mean value, median to compute median value, RMS to calculate root mean square values, VAR to calculate variance values, and many others.